there, it's Chris Leverdine, and today I'm going to share with you how I crocheted this adorable baby Yoda! Yay! Now, if you haven't watched The Mandalorian on Disney Plus yet, wow, are you missing out because that's where baby Yoda's from, and he's just the most adorable thing in the galaxy! And I also want to let you guys know that this was my very first time ever crocheting a doll before, or an amigurumi. And the process of figuring out how to make this was quite the journey, but in the end I think it turned out really cute. So without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I'm using size 4 yarn from the brand I Love This Yarn in the color Light Sage, as well as size 4 yarn from the brand Crafter Secret in the color Light Ivory. I got both of these from Hobby Lobby, and the size hook that I'm using is a size 5mm hook. And the first thing that we're going to do is grab our green yarn, and we're going to start on Baby Yoda's head. So, in order to make his head, we're going to again grab the green yarn, create a slip knot, and after you've created that slip knot, you're going to chain 2. Yep, just chain 2. And after you've chained two, you're going to go into that first stitch that you created and make a single crochet within that stitch. And after you've created that single crochet within that stitch, you're going to go into the same exact stitch and create another single crochet, followed by three more single crochets within the same stitch for a total of five single crochets within that one stitch. And after you've created five single crochets within that one stitch, you're going to create single crochets on top of those single crochets that you just created. So it's essentially going to serve as a second row of single crochets. So you're just going to go into the single crochet stitches that you just created and make another row of single crochets on top. And once you've gone around the full circle and went into every one of those five single crochets, then your project should look something like this, just a little round circle. And after you're at that point, we are going to change it up just a little bit. So you have this little circle right here and you want the little circle to grow. And in order for it to grow, you need to add more stitches to every row. <laughs> Yes, it rhymed. But anywho, in order for you to increase the number of stitches per row, you're going to now create two single crochets inside of every stitch instead of just um, making one per stitch. Every single time you come across a single crochet, you're going to crochet within that stitch two single crochets. So you're going to go to the next stitch and create two single crochets within that one stitch. And little by little, the circle is going to grow more and more. And that's how you increase the number of stitches per row and continue growing your circle. And you want to continue growing the circle because, again, you want Baby Yoda's head to be a decent size. And um, I'm not the kind of person who actually counts the number of stitches and stuff that I create. I pretty much just go by what it looks like, and this was my very first time making anything like this or this project in general, so I was just kind of winging it. So I don't have the exact number of rows I created, but I just uh, went by how I felt. So I wanted Baby Yoda's head to be about this big, and once I was happy with the size of my circle, it was time to make it a sphere. Um, and in order to make it a sphere, you need this to curve inward and close at the other end. And in order for us to do that, we're going to start decreasing the number of stitches that are in each row. So before, we were working on increasing the number of stitches to make the project larger, and now we're working on decreasing the number of stitches to make the project smaller and smaller until it eventually closes. So again, we're going to work on creating less single crochets per row, and in order to do that, we're going to start skipping stitches, that way it could curve in like this, little by little. So what I'm doing is I am single crocheting three times into every stitch I come across, and then once I have created my third single crochet in a row, I am going to skip over a stitch, 
and then crochet three single crochets in a row and then I'm going to skip a stitch and then crochet three single crochets in a row and then skip a stitch and so on and so forth until little by little the project is curving more and more and will eventually close now again your project may be a different size so if you want a more gradual change then you just skip a stitch less often so instead of single crocheting three times and then skipping a stitch you may want to single crochet four times and then skip a stitch or five times and then skip a stitch totally up to you if you see that the project is closing in way too fast then uh, um, that's a decision you can make to change it if you see that your project is not closing in fast enough then just skip a stitch more often so instead of every three um, single crochets and then skip a stitch just skip every other stitch totally up to you but eventually you're going to get to the point where your project is about to close but you don't want to make the opening too small because you still need to stuff it now I don't have uh, polyester stuffing or cotton or anything so all I did was grab some of the tan yarn that I'm going to be using later and I rolled it up and stuffed it into the project and now it's a squishy little ball. Um, after I um, stuffed the um, head, I went ahead and sealed the project by continuing to skip a stitch until um, there weren't any stitches left and the project sealed on its own and I have this little sphere for Baby Yoda's head. So now that we're done with Baby Yoda's head, we're going to get to work on his body, which is uh, pretty much the exact same way on how to make his head. And the only difference is going to be that it's going to be a little bit bigger, but the beginning is going to be the exact same. You're going to first create a slip stitch, and then you're going to chain two. And after you have chain two, you're going to go into that first stitch, and you're going to create five single crochets within that one stitch and after you've created those five single crochets within that one stitch you're going to create another row of single crochets on top of that first row of single crochet that you created and once you have created that second row of single crochet then you're going to continue growing that circle by making two single crochets per stitch and eventually the circle is going to get bigger and bigger until you're happy with the size of your circle. So yeah, again, in order to grow your circle, you're going to crochet two single crochets per stitch. And little by little, it'll start to get bigger and bigger as you saw happen when you just made the head. But yeah, essentially you're going to make this circle larger than the head because you don't want the head and the body to be the exact same size. So uh, grab your head and um, kind of imagine what you think the head and the body are going to look like. And if you're happy with how wide the body is going to be, then it's time to change it up and start decreasing the number of stitches per row and making the project curve inward. Now, um, I actually wanted the project to be more of a pear shape as opposed to a round shape like the head. So instead of me skipping a stitch every um, three stitches I create, like I create three single crochets and then I skip a stitch, I made five single crochets and then I skipped a stitch and it made the project look more like a pear as opposed to a circle because again, the... Um, decreasing was not as frequent so it kind of elongated the project which is exactly what I wanted I again wanted more of a pear shape and uh, before I sealed the project too much I made sure that there was enough room for me to uh, fill the body with um, my stuffing which is this makeshift stuffing from rolled up yarn but again if you have cotton or polyfill then go ahead and use that that's a more like professional way of making these projects but I just had to use what I had so I say whatever works and this worked um, after I had stuffed the body that sounds really weird 
Um, I just went ahead and sealed the rest of the project by continuing to decrease the number of stitches until I got to the very top and there weren't any more stitches and it sealed the project. So, now that I have the head and the body, the project would look something like this once I attached them together. And now I need the arms, and the arms are a little bit more complicated to make only because it's they're so small. Um, but you pretty much start off the same way as we did the other um, pieces of the body. You're going to create a slip knot, and then you're going to go into that slip knot, create two chains, then go into that first chain that you created, make five single crochets within that one stitch, and then make another row of single crochet around um, or on top of that row of single crochet. And once you do that, you're actually not going to uh, increase any of the stitches anymore. That's pretty much as wide as you want your Baby Yoda's arm to be. Unless, of course, you're making a bigger version of um, our Baby Yoda. But um, if not, then yeah, that's how big I made my Baby Yoda arms. So essentially, after I made that second row of single crochet, I just continued making uh, rows of single crochet on top of the previous rows of single crochet. So only one single crochet per stitch, and then I just continued that until um, towards the end, and then I started decreasing the number of stitches, which is basically I skipped like every other stitch, and then it the project closed within like two rows just because there's not that many stitches to work with in the beginning um, but uh, after I was happy with the length of the arm I went ahead and painstakingly stuffed it with yarn because I still wanted it to be stuffed even though uh, this limb is thin enough where you really don't need to stuff it but I just went ahead and stuffed it anyway because I wanted the bottom of the arm to be chubby um, but yeah, after I made that first arm, it looked something like this, and I went ahead and made the second arm the exact same way, and after I made the second arm, the project looked something like this. So now I have the main body, the head, the body, the arms, and now all we need to do is make the adorable Baby Yoda ears. And once again, we're going to start off the exact same way as we did the other parts of the body. We are going to make a slip stitch, and then we're going to chain two. And after we have chained two, we're going to go into that first stitch and create a single crochet. After we've created that one single crochet, we're going to go back uh, into that same stitch and make four more single crochets within that same stitch for a total of five single crochets inside of that one stitch. And after you've finished crocheting those um, five single crochets, then you're going to go around the circle with some more single crochets, but this time you're going to pinpoint which um, points you're going to make the ears of Yoda. Okay, that's a little bit complicated. You know how Yoda's ears are pointed, right? Well, you're going to pinpoint where you want those points to be, and at those points, you're going to uh, single crochet three stitches inside of that one stitch you want to be the point of the ears. So I chose this spot to be the point, so I single crocheted three times into that one stitch, that way it can serve as a point, and then I'm just going to single crochet my way around to the other side and then make the other point. Um, I guess Yoda's ears are more of a teardrop shape where it's more round where it's attached to his head and then the part that is not attached to his head at the end of his ear is more pointy, but for some reason I decided to make both of these um, sides pointed. So um, I went around the project as I normally would with one single crochet per stitch and then when I reached those points I created three single crochets for that one stitch that way it could again be pointed 
and once I have created those three single crochets at that point I just went ahead and single crocheted my way around once again to the other side and after I reached the other side I made another three single crochets on that point and just continued until I was happy with the size of his ears and I really hope that made sense because that's honestly the best way that I could explain it. Every time you want to make a point, you're just going to create three single crochets in that spot. So uh, I just continued doing that until I was happy with the size of Yoda's ears. Now you can totally make his ears humongous and make him look adorable, but I just made him like this medium size to uh, make it still look really cute and like um, Yoda's ears, but not too exaggerated. But I feel like you can make his ears really big and it would also look super adorable. So again, totally up to you. But yeah, that's how I made his ears. And once I finished the first one, I did the exact same thing and made the second one. And after that, I was done crocheting actual Baby Yoda. Woo! -hoo! But now for another complicated part of the project, which is to attach everything. Now, I've never done this before, as I've said um, earlier in this video. Uh, this is my very first uh, crochet doll that I've ever made. And um, I don't necessarily know how to attach things properly, or if there's like a certain method, or if this is even the right way to do it. Maybe I'm doing it right after all. But it's just kind of messy looking because I essentially just grab the excess yarn that I had left behind every time I cut off the um, yarn from the yarn ball I made sure to leave enough excess yarn for me to use later on because I knew I was going to have to attach all of these pieces together so I used those um, extra pieces of yarn to pretty much slip stitch around the project so I would put the hook through say the head and also through the body and then I would bring the yarn through and slip stitch them together so that they're attached and that's what I pretty much did for every single part of Baby Yoda's body I didn't really have a specific um, pattern to it. I just kind of chose an area where I wanted the head to be attached to, uh, the area where I wanted the head to be attached to the body, and then I slip stitched my way through, kind of tugged on the yarn, and voila, I was attached. <laughs> I tried to make it as pretty as possible, and that was essentially my process whenever I attached anything to Baby Yoda. In the end, I think it turned out really cute. So this is the head attached to the body and I think it looks nice and chubby and cute and adorable and I'm happy with the way it came out and after I attached the head to the body I went ahead and attached the arms pretty much the exact same way and I think it looks really really cute um, and after I attached the arms I went ahead and grabbed his ears and again attached them using the exact same method and after I attached the ears woohoo I was done crocheting baby Yoda and his body is all intact and put together and he looks super cute and chibi but now it's time for the dreaded jacket this jacket oh my goodness I don't know why I had such a hard time trying to figure out how to make this jacket but I did it. It again is not um, the smoothest um, tutorial on how to make this jacket. I kind of went all over the place but um, I made it and this is how I did. So I grabbed my tan yarn and I made a slip stitch. After I made that slip stitch I went into it and created a chain that was long enough to wrap around uh, Baby Yoda, his um, chubbiest part of his body. Um, and after I made a chain that was long enough to wrap around Baby Yoda, I went back on that chain with a double crochet. Now, I switched it up from single crochet to double crochet because I wanted the stitch to look different um, as opposed to his the rest of his body. So the rest of his body is single crochet and I wanted his jacket to be... I don't know, different. So that's why I just went with double crochet. But you can continue making the jacket with single crochet if you want to. I actually ended up making another Baby Yoda 
and I used single crochet for the jacket and I actually really like the way it turned out but totally up to you if you want the stitches to look different as opposed to like his body and his jacket then use double crochet or any other uh, stitch that you'd like um, or you could just continue using single crochet but either way I made a row of double crochet and I made sure that it fit him and once I made sure that it did fit him I went ahead and made some more rows of double crochet up until his armpit area and after I um, reached his armpit area I planned on making a little sleeve for him so um, I think I made three or four more rows of double crochet until I reached his armpit and then once I reached his armpit I measured out like where I wanted the sleeve to go so about right here and then I'm going to make the sleeve so from the edge right here I'm going to crochet my way to the point where I think I'm going to make the sleeve so it was a lot of like trying it on and then crocheting and then trying it on and then crocheting which is basically what I do for all of my tutorials if you are a returning subscriber and have watched my or like any of my crochet top tutorials this is essentially what I do for crochet tops too I literally try it on or put it against my body and then I crochet it and then I try it on and then I crochet it and then I try it on so yeah, just if you're wondering what my process was, that's essentially what it is. Anywho, back to Baby Yoda. So after I created a chain, I made sure that it fit Baby Yoda's arm and it was going to wrap around him um, not too snugly. I do want it a little bit loose because in The Mandalorian, his robe is a little bit loose and oversized and looks adorable and that's the kind of vibe I'm going for with this robe. So after I chained a chain that was long enough to wrap around his arm and had plenty of space for it to look a little bit oversized, I um, attached the um, chain a couple stitches over. So I think I skipped three stitches and then I attached it to the fourth stitch. And then I made the actual sleeve, which I basically just crocheted around this portion. And I continued double crocheting all around that area. And I made a couple rows of double crochet. I only made like two rows of double crochet to make the sleeves because again, Baby Yoda is tiny. So he doesn't really need that many rows um, in order to make a sleeve. Um, although... In The Mandalorian, his robe is um, greatly oversized, so you can't really see his hands when he's just walking because the sleeves are too long. But I wanted my Baby Yoda to have his hands showing, so um, I only made two rows of double crochet for the sleeve. But if you want the robe to cover his arms, then just make um, more rows for the sleeve. It's again totally up to you. You can customize your Baby Yoda in any way you like. But yeah, that's just what I did to make my sleeves. I made two rows of double crochet um, in that little circle area with the um, bottom portion of the robe and then the chain I just created. And I just went around that twice with the double crochet and I made the sleeve. So after I was done with those two rows of double crochet to make the sleeve, I of course tried it on Baby Yoda to make sure that it fits him. And once I was happy with the fit, I went ahead and did the exact same thing to the other side. But first let me show you how it fits my Baby Yoda. Again, I didn't want the sleeves to cover all of his arms. I wanted a little bit of his arms to still um, peek through because I think that's super adorable. And I worked really hard on crocheting his body. Like at least a little bit's going to show. <laughs> um, but yeah, totally up to you if you wanted to completely dwarf his little arms and cover his entire body and just show his head but I wanted the arms to peek through I think it's a little cuter that way but totally up to you so after I was done with the first sleeve I detached the yarn and then reattached it to the back of the robe and then I double crocheted across the back because I did need to make the back a little bit longer it wasn't covering his entire back so I made another row of a double crochet making my way um, to the opposite side to where I wanted the other sleeve to be and after I um, thought I was around the area where I wanted 
to make the second sleeve. I made sure that I was going to um, make the robe even um, by kind of measuring out to where I need to make the other sleeve in order for the robe to be even. Again, I don't count stitches or anything, I just eyeball it and that's what I do to make sure that they're even. I just align the two ends together and then I found out where I made the first sleeve and then I made the second sleeve the exact same way so that they're even. And this is what the robe looks like so far. Now clearly I need some um, more rows in the front and on the back to even everything out so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Again, rather messily. Um, there's no um, really clear path I took to make this robe. I just went ahead and saw the gaps that I had um, in Dave Riotta's robe and I reattached the yarn to wherever I wanted to crochet and then I made a couple more rows of a double crochet to fill in those gaps and make everything cohesive. And once I was happy with how everything looked, then I was done. So yeah, right now I just reattach the yarn to the end of the robe and then I'm going to make a couple more uh, double crochets and also attach the sleeve to like the rest of the robe. So again, it's more cohesive instead of just like the sleeves dangling um, at the ends of the robe for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I did and once I was done with one side, I uh, ran around the whole project so without cutting the yarn from the yarn ball I just crocheted my way from one end of the robe to the opposite end of the robe and then I did the exact same thing where I like filled in the missing gap um, with more uh, double crochets and it pretty much worked and I'm happy with how it looked afterwards. I realized that it is a little bit uneven, but in the end it's fine because I'm just going to sew everything together and you won't be able to tell. Believe me, you won't be able to tell. Now, if you do want your robe to be open, um, then you may want to make sure that, <laughs> that both sides are even. But um, yeah, mine weren't even, but that was okay because once I sewed them together, you couldn't even tell. So yeah, this is what his robe roughly is going to look like and that's pretty much the best I'm going to do because man, I hate making this robe. Like I said before, by now, by the time I'm editing this video, I've actually already made two Baby Yodas, this Baby Yoda and then also another one and both times the worst part of this project was making that dang robe. <laughs> it's, it's just because I feel like it's such a messy process to make the robe but uh, everything else, it's sure it's time consuming because you have to make the body and the arms and the head and the ears, but man, that robe. Anywho, time to make Baby Yoda's scarf, which is super duper easy. All you have to do is chain a chain that's going to wrap around Baby Yoda's neck, but not strangle him. So make sure it has a little bit of leeway so it's nice and cozy on him. And after you've created that chain, you're going to go back on that chain using a double crochet and make a total of three rows of double crochet. And after you've created those three rows of double crochet, I went ahead and twisted the project so it kind of looks like a little infinity scarf. And um, for it to actually be like a little infinity scarf, I went ahead and attached the two ends together. Um, and all I did was put the two ends together and then slip stitched my way down both of the ends. So by the time I got to the bottom, the um, whole project was all one circle as opposed to a linear project and now it's like a little affinity scarf that baby Yoda has and then I just cut the yarn from the yarn ball and sealed the project by bringing in the extra yarn through the last loop and then I normally just tuck in some of the extra yarn and then cut um, all the flyaway pieces afterwards when I do the details so yeah, that's his little scarf and I'm just going to put it on his head and he's going to look super cute and snuggly 
Yay! So now we're finally, 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 finally done with the crochet portion of this project. Man, that took a long time. And a lot of people ask how long it takes me to do certain projects. And it actually took me five hours to make this. Yes, five hours to make this itty bitty Baby Yoda. And that's because I just went ahead and figured everything out myself. I didn't watch any tutorials or anything, so I was just kind of, again, winging it as I went along. And because of that, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I did cut out every time I made a mistake here because obviously I don't want to confuse you in this video. But yeah, it took me forever, and hopefully it doesn't take you as long to make yours. But yeah, that's the answer. It took me five hours to make this baby Yoda. Anywho, now that I am done with the crochet portion of this project, I am going to go on to the details. So I went ahead and sewed the front of the robe shut like I said I was going to do, and then I cut away those um, pieces of yarn that were sticking out. And now for the final touch, the eyes. Now I got these eyes from Hobby Lobby as well. Um, they were just in like the eye section. I don't really know what they're called, but you could also get these on Amazon. Uh, you could just type in plastic eyes and voila! You could just stick them in to where you want the eyes to be and there's your little baby Yoda! Yay! Baby Yoda! Baby Baby Yoda! Baby Yoda! Baby Baby Yoda! <laughs> if you don't recognize that song, you have to follow me on TikTok, alright? <laughs> It is at Crystal Everdeen underscore because just at Crystal Everdeen was already taken for some reason. But yes, if you are a fan of Disney, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Crystal Everdeen so you can follow along on all of my Disney adventures and more. And like I said before, TikTok as well. I make a lot of fun videos on there too. And I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you love your new adorable baby Yoda. If you found this video either interesting, entertaining, or helpful, please give it a big thumbs up before you go. And also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you have not already so I can see you next time. Bye! And may the force be with you.